thought I'd do a quick video showing how to use instancing as a modeling workflow and how to make those instances real. Uh, this is in response to a question I got on another video on my channel about duplicating along the curve without deforming. And, um, you know, there's there's a couple of workflows in the, or a couple of quirks in the instancing workflow, which are um, pretty hard to explain in a comment. So here's, here I'll just go through the process I use. So what I want to do is um, duplicate or instance this bolt across like the belt, the shoulder pads and the, the helmet. Um, but I also want to make them real. So I want to make them actually part of the model rather than just using the instances in the end, because I want to export this uh, to like a sculpting program and stuff like that and have a little bit more control over the UVs. Uh, so here, what I'm going to do is use the polys as the instances, right? Um, going to separate a copy, going to call that copy something like instance uh, bolt. It's a really good practice to actually name the object that's instancing so you can find it easily. Uh, and I'll show you why in a moment. So there's there's my little instancer. In this particular case, I'm going to show the wireframe because I want to know like there's going to be one instance per poly. Select my thing, um, the rivet, and parent it with Control P. And nothing happens. Ooh, yeah, that's because we have to go to the object properties, and then tell it to instance on faces. Totally done. Look at that. Perfect. Scale by face size and just sort of adjust that to what looks right. Um, you'll notice I've only done a portion of it. That's because I'm going to use the mirroring modifier to uh, just get it on both sides and make sure bisect X is on so that we don't, you know, have our duplicates under each other because uh, that's going to be really lame. Now, it's really easy to then just sort of select other faces, right? So I'm just going to click through these. Um, separate another copy of those, right? Uh, get rid of that subdiv, and then just select my other object and join it, right? And so you can see it's, you know, especially with that mirror modifier on it, it's very quickly to then just go through all the bits of your model that you want to add detail to, right? So separate copy there too, um, tab, select, uh, get rid of that, and then just join it to the rest of the instancer. Right, um, and so the original question was like, how do I hide this plane, right? And um, and that's that's pretty straightforward. You can select the object and you can click here uh, to show instance and just disable it in the viewport. Um, the reason I named my object before is because now that I've hidden it, there's no real easy avenue to actually select the instancer anymore. So it just really helps if you've made sure it stands out from the crowd. Um, you can turn it off in the viewport and the renderer. Right, and um, yeah, you know, that's that's a good way. But if you want to make sure that this is part of the model and you want to bake it down, you can make these instances real with a couple of steps. So with the instancer selected, you know, object, apply, and then make instances real. Boom, yeah. Uh, and now if you want to get rid of the original plane, you can just go delete and there they are. So we're done, right? Uh, no, not yet. There's one little quirk that um, took me a little while to find, but uh, I'll pass it on here. I want to join all these together so they're a little bit easier to manage, and so I just go Control J and that. You know, we what uh, weird stuff's happening. You can kind of tell there's there's like the helmet and the spoilers and the belt. Um, so what's happening is. Every single one of these uh, prior instances are sharing the same data block, right? And so um, what we have to do before we merge them uh, is uh, go to this, this properties here, object data properties. And there's this little thing up here, the number of 47. It's the number of, uh, you know, users or things that are sharing this data, right? So to make sure that we can join them together properly, we have to click that. And now when we join them, they're all unique objects and they bake together correctly. So there we go. Nice and easy. Got a good, good copy uh, of all of them across. And now we can continue on making our object. So cool. I hope that helped.